In this video, we are going to look at a few questions that specifically focus on how acetals perform the vital role of protecting groups in organic chemical reactions. You see, they are absolutely an indispensable part of organic reactions and help us obtain products which would be otherwise quite challenging to form under normal reaction conditions. So, let's take a quick short recap on how acetals are formed in the first place. We won't go deep into the mechanism of how acetals are formed because that requires an entire video by itself which I'll be doing shortly so don't worry about that. But for now we're just going to see how acetals are formed in general and how they act as a protecting group. Alright. So basically acetals are formed when aldehydes and ketones react with alcohols in acidic medium. As you can see here, two moles of alcohols react with a mole of aldehyde to give us acetal. With one mole of alcohol, we get a hemiacetal and with two moles, we get an acetal. Similarly, ketones also react with a mole of alcohol to form hemiketal and with another mole, it gives us a ketal. Now, even though ketals specifically refer to the formation from ketones, acetals in general can refer to both of these structures. Anyway, coming back, we can see that this reaction happens in acidic medium and is reversible. That means the same acetals or ketals can hydrolyze back to their respective parent carbonyl compounds, aldehydes and ketones. And not just that, they are sensitive as I mentioned only in acidic medium. Which means in basic or in the presence of neutral medium, these acetals and ketals are highly stable. And it is this easy interconversion between the acetals and their respective carbonyl groups that make them act as very good protecting groups. And one of the most common alcohols used for this purpose is ethylene glycol. Ethylene glycol as you can see here is a dihydric alcohol which means it has two OH groups. And in the presence of ethylene glycol we get cyclic acetals or cyclic ketals. Now these cyclic acetals are much more stable than the acetals formed from monohydric alcohols or those alcohols which have only one OH group attached to it. And not just that, this interconversion requires a much more milder acidic condition as compared to the acidic conditions that we use in a typical reaction like this. Plus, the yield is very good in this reaction as well. So clearly you can see why we prefer to use ethylene glycol in order to form acetals. Firstly, they form stable cyclic acetals. Secondly, the reaction conditions required is much milder. We need milder acidic conditions. And lastly, the yield is very good. Alright, so now that you know how acetals are formed, let's see how they act as protecting group in a typical organic reaction. Okay, so our first question is, how can we bring about this conversion? So in this reaction, as you can see, the keto group is getting selectively reduced to secondary alcohols, leaving our aldehyde group intact. Now this is extremely challenging to obtain in a typical laboratory condition because we know that aldehydes are much more reactive than ketones. And because aldehydes are more reactive, they would be the first to get reduced, right? So when we use a typical reducing agent like lithium aluminium hydride or let's say sodium borohydride, the final structure would have the ketone reduced to secondary alcohol and the aldehyde reduced to primary alcohol. But that is not what we got here. Now this reaction can happen only if we somehow mask the reactivity of aldehyde group and make the reaction happen selectively at the keto group here. And for that we will employ acetals. So let me remove this here. So in order to get our acetal we would react our starting compound with one equivalent of ethylene glycol in which case we would get a cyclic acetal like this. You can see that this group has now been blocked completely. The aldehydes are blocked. And now we can carry out a reduction reaction where the keto group can get reduced to secondary alcohol, right? And for that you can employ any reducing agent like sodium borohydride or lithium aluminium hydride. And that would give us the secondary alcohol as you can see here. Now to get this product, all we need to do is hydrolyze the acetal. So acetal gets converted back to the aldehyde form and this is our final product. So clearly we can see how acetal formation has helped this reaction happen selectively at the keto group even though this is less reactive than the aldehyde group here. Correct? Alright, so let's look at one more question. In this reaction again you can see that the more reactive aldehyde group apparently remains untouched in the final product but the less reactive keto group has been transformed into this. The attack or the reaction has taken place at this site. 
So I'm going to let you pause the video here and try giving this question a shot. Okay. Let me give you a clue. A nucleophilic attack is happening at this site and clearly you can see that the nucleophile seems like CS3 minus ion and yeah that's pretty much the clue. So pause the video here and give this a shot. So the first thing obviously is to protect our aldehyde group correct and for that we have to use the acetal. We will use the typical one equivalent of ethylene glycol and block the aldehyde group here and now let the reaction happen selectively at this site. So you can see that CH3 minus attacks the carbonyl group so looks like it should be a Grignard reaction uh, where our nucleophile is CH3 minus. So this CH3 minus ion attacks the C double bond group here delocalizes the pi electrons and this results in the formation of an intermediate like this. So the next step is to hydrolyze in the presence of an acidic medium. So what happens O minus abstracts a proton from the medium and gives us the alcohol and the cyclic acetal gives us back our aldehyde group. Now remember this reaction is possible again only because our cyclic acetal is stable in the presence of a nucleophile like CH3 minus. And this has enabled the selective attack at the keto side instead of the aldehyde side. Even though as I said numerous times by now aldehydes are more reactive and ideally in a typical reaction condition the reaction would happen at this side instead of the keto side. And for one equivalent of Grignard reagent our product would have looked something like this. But you can see here that this is a product and not this one. And in order to obtain this as a final product, we would have to use acetals as a protecting group. 